Hey everybody, Mike Wittig here, Professor Klaus, here for another lesson on Premiere Pro. Today we're going to be learning about Lumetri Color and Lumetri Scopes. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Scopes scare a lot of people. I'm going to teach you about exposure on the high end and exposure on the low end and how to fix it using color Lumetri. Or Lumetri Color? I always get them confused. Let's go take a look. So here I am in Premiere Pro and what I'm going to do, I have a sequence opened up for you. It's all set up and it's a shot that I made while I was in Paris and it looks pretty good on its own. But I think you'll notice that once we look a little closer, there are some corrections that could be made. So here we go. So we're going to get started and we're going to get on the same page by going to Window and go to Workspaces and we're going to work in the color profile. So let's select that. Now this opens up Lumetri Color as well as Lumetri Scopes. Your screen might not look the same with different video of course, but we also want to make the layout look the same. So we're going to go back up to Window, and go to Workspaces, and then go to Reset to Save Layout. So we've got our scopes right here, our Lumetri Scopes. Right there we have the Vector Scope here, then we've got our Parade, then we have our Histogram, and then finally we have our waveform here. So what we want to do is we want to just narrow this down to just the waveform. So I'm going to right click on this window and I'm going to go to presets and then go to waveform RGB. And there we have the color RGB waveform, but we want to simplify this even more because we're just going to deal with the darks and the brights. So let's right click on there again and we're going to go to waveform type and select luma so along the left side here there's a scale that goes from zero to a hundred and that's what our video is supposed to be within these waveforms in the center they represent the video with the whites and brights touching the top and the darks touching the bottom we're going to fix that because we don't want any of our video touching the top or the bottom if I go and take my exposure and I up it really all to the maximum, you can see how the exposure line, how the whites and the brights are making a hard line. They are overexposed. So similarly, if I take the exposure all the way down, you can see all the darks are hugging the zero. They're underexposed. I'll just double click the exposure there to reset it. And let's scrub through the footage and look for the worst footage that's in this clip. That would be the most overexposed or most underexposed. We're gonna look for the worst part. If you notice right here, you can see how the trees and bushes on the right side, the darkness is all represented on the scopes with everything being down to the bottom. There's nothing right above. On the left side, you can see the skyline there and then you see the little highlights of what might be the culprit and that might be the boat. But let's keep scrolling through and let's look for the worst part of the footage that's overexposed or underexposed. It looks like the beginning of the clip here has the most peaks and low points. So let's get started with that part of the video. First off, we're gonna bring up the darks just so they're not touching that zero line anymore. So I'm gonna go over to basic correction and then I'm gonna take the blacks and I'm gonna bring them up or there we go. See now they're way too up. But let's just get them not touching that zero line. Keep on moving it up. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, not bad. I can bring these shadows back down. It's not gonna bring it down below the zero mark anymore but it will bring some contrast to the video. I'm pretty happy with that right now. This can all be fine-tuned. Now onto the, the brights, and we're gonna go to the exposure here, and we're gonna bring that down, and you can see it's not touching the white, the top line there. So right about there, looks pretty good. And that works, I can reset that. I could have maybe done the highlights, but the highlights don't actually move the top line. They just take it with the highlights in the video. So then we'll go down to the whites, and we'll bring that down, and that works too. I prefer to work the exposure on this case. So whatever one you like works best for you. It's whatever makes the best picture. So bring down the exposure again here. And that looks good. And I might take the highlights and bring some in there again. See, it's not pushing over the line or anything, but it does make some nice color. So that's that. That's color. That's exposure has been done right now. So now we might want to go to the, um, adjust that a bit more. Let's go to the temperature and it's a little warm. So I'm gonna bring over a little bit of blue and I like the way that looks right there. That's not bad at all. Work through the video here. I think we're looking pretty good. It's beautiful. 
there are more areas in Lumber Tree Color farther down that you can adjust. There's creative, curves, color wheels, and match. And that's not to be confused with color correction. It's more color grading. And color grading is making more adjustments to your sequence to create like a look or a mood. So that can be done by adding complementary colors to the shadows, the highlights, and it's more advanced. But this video is just about the basic exposure and basic color correction. That's all for today, guys. Please leave a comment in the section if you want to see something special. I'm happy to help you. Like and subscribe, it goes a long way. Until next time.